Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Our our first move, our first meeting of the new year. So ha happy new year to everybody. We we have some new members. Um, well, first of all, let me call the meeting to order officially. Um, I want to welcome our new members. We have Ali Costanza. Hi. Leon, Leanne Zaleski. Zelinsky. Zelinsky, thank you. Yeah. Hi, thank everyone. You. Hi. And then and Michael Kadish. I don't think Michael's on yet. Um, but those are our, our three new members. Congratulations. And uh, let's jump into the to the next thing. This will be to approve the minutes of the December 6th meeting and the November 22nd meeting. I, I didn't have that on the agenda, but I, I, I wanted to just, you know, we just do them both together. Um, can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay, second? Second. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's pretty unanimous. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. There's an echo there. Um, well, let's jump right in. We, we have David Knopf joining us. He's, he's our, our, our town health director. And David's going to give us a, a, an update on, on the budget and, and what's happening with that. So go ahead, David. Well, uh, thanks, Mac. And uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, yeah. Even though it seems like it's been uh, going forever, um, COVID hasn't gone away. We are not going to talk about that now. Well, I guess I will be talking to the greater RTM about that later this evening. Um, but what I have done, and, uh, and thank you, Mac, for inviting me to speak with the group, is to make a few changes or proposals for changes in our budget this year. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if, if we have the spreadsheet that I had prepared uh, available to share with the group. You ready for it? Lois, I, I am ready for it, if everybody else is. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> what I did was I, I compared the previous year totals 2021 uh, of, of uh, activities with what we envision happening in 22-23. And uh, there are a couple of things that we all know are happening in town that are very different from what uh, what's happened in the past. And that is we have a couple of major developments uh, occurring uh, that are going to be adding quite a few businesses to town. Um, in particular, um, the numbers that I got from Jeremy are that they're in Corbin's. Just in Corbin's alone, there's going to be adding 17,000 square feet of uh, food service. At Palmer's, they're going to be adding almost 9,000 square feet for, and these are not just not just one place, but multiple places. 9,000 square feet at Palmer's and at Federal, uh, which is, I guess, the stop and shop property, about 17,000 additional square feet of personal service and, uh, and uh, food service could be as many as 23, 24, 25 new restaurants in town. So currently, if we look at the spreadsheet that I've, I've prepared. <clears throat> um, okay, I'm good. That's fine. At the top, we have food service and currently we have 150 facilities. And I'll get into why some are in red and some are in black in a moment. Uh, but Right now, we have about 150 facilities, give or take a couple. Um, I'm estimating that by the time the new fiscal year comes in, um, in July, we could have as many as 180. Now, there is a certain number of inspections that we're required to do. And prior to each one of these facilities opening, we have to review the plans and we have to do the inspections within the facilities. Um, so there's a manpower need here and just looking at across the top where we have the, uh, on, in the left-hand column, there's 150 facilities. Um, we estimate should be about a hundred, 450 inspections, uh, total time of 900 hours, uh, with the new estimated number of facilities next in this coming year of 180. 
our total time is 1,080 hours just to do food service inspections. Uh, <clears throat> plan review in line eight also goes up considerably to reflect the amount of time needed to review these facilities before they come online. So <clears throat> what, I, what I've asked for in this year's budget is to take what we currently have as two part-time, two very part-time uh, uh, in people, inspectors, one who does inspections 12 hours a week and one who does plan reviews remotely from home to, to eliminate those two positions and create one full-time position. So uh, it would be adding a full-time position to our, uh, to our staff where we currently have two part-time people. Um, the part-time people's total time right now is probably somewhere around um, just under 20 hours a week. Our inspector works 12 hours and our plan, uh, the plan review person works about six hours. So we're under, we're under 20 hours, but there is, I don't see any way that we're going to be able to meet the need uh, for plan reviews with our current staff. And that doesn't count. And if we go down to line 12, we currently have 36 salons. That's the nail salons, the hairdressing salons, and so on, personal service salons. That's also going to be increasing with the new proposed developments. So that's more inspection time and more plan review time. Um, we're also seeing uh, down uh, under the line item number 20, septic permits. Septic is a fair amount of our, of our work in town. Um, and we've seen a, a tremendous increase in septic related work in the last two years um, from where we were before. And I don't see any way or any reason for that to change coming forward, going forward. Um, and they're time consuming. There's a lot of aspects of our work that uh, involve septic systems from plan reviews to soil, from soil testing to plan reviews to, to the inspections themselves. Um, so that again is going to have extra demands on our time. And you notice I'm not even talking about the amount of time that we're spent dealing and responding to COVID, which goes on every day, because that's, that's a separate part of our job that came along in the last two years that we really never did before. Um, and of course, if you continue scrolling down, we have our regular activities of the beach, uh, beach water sampling, <clears throat> complaints, nursery school inspections, and their flu clinics, and the and the um, administrative work that we've always had. Now, if you go back up to the that's so the, so the one part of my budget request is to ask for uh, a combination of part-time people into full uh, one full-time person. The other major component of my budget, which is a capital uh, in improvement request, is to upgrade our software system. We still operate on a pay by check. We get, we have to do paper applications. We send out to you scroll up to the top, please, uh, Lois. We're in the process right now of renewing all of our food service permits. There are 150 of them. That's 150 applications that need to be fought, folded, put into an envelope, and mailed out. Stamped, mailed out. Meaning that all of them return checks to us with a filled out paper permit application. We have no ability to accept electronic payments or electronic applications for permits. Um, I have gotten price quotes to do this, to incorporate this into our, uh, into our uh, operations for this year. And uh, it's a capital improvements request. And I think it's, it's about $19,000 for this year with uh, an extra $6,000 per year for three years. Um, if you look and again, look at the numbers of food service items that have to do with permits and paper 
We have the 150 for the food service routine permits. We also do reinspection fees. That's the 18 temporary events. We, they have to submit paper applications for temporary events. We do plan reviews. So just for food service alone, on a course of a year, we'll have as many as 204 paper applications we review now. Next year, I'm looking at considerably more than that, 252. Salons, same thing. You know, permit applications are done by paper with check payments and uh, not electronic. Uh, I've requested electronic approval in the past. This year I have the, um, I actually put together the price quotes to get it done. And uh, I, I really think it's essential for us to streamline our, our operation to enable us to do this electronically. Other departments in town have it and uh, we, yeah, excuse, we Excuse don't. me, David, I just wanna jump in here. I, I just, I can't speak for the um, application part of it, but I find it incredible that the town just doesn't have a top to bottom format that every department uses for payment. It just, it, to me, it's shocking that you have to go groveling for, for this process that every, every other department in town whether you're paying your dump sticker, whether you're you're getting a beach pass, you you just pay online. It just doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, that's my editorial. It doesn't make sense Mac, to me either. Mac, it's Lois. I just want to say that each of the different departments has different systems, so it's not like everybody's on a system and 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 David isn't. They're all individual. And David, my question to you is: Is the system you're proposing similar or the same as any of the systems that are currently in place in Town Hall? Let's see. See, part of the, that is part of the problem, Lois. And, you know, we did a search last year to do a, uh, a comprehensive revision of the town's um, uh, electronic database and this, this whole infrastructure piece. And <clears throat> the, the uh, software system that we use is uh, associated, it's Tyler Tech, Tyler Tech, which is the uh, parent company of Munis which is our finance um, program that is running the finance department. And for whatever reason, um, that was the system I advocated because I thought that it's made sense, not just because we were using it, but because the system that we had was the same as the system that finance department was using and it would make sense for the entire town hall to use it. And, uh, it, it didn't work out that way for whatever reason. I don't know if it was pricing or just the, I, I, I have no idea of why, but the answer to your question, Lois, is we do use a different system. What about um, the other systems that, that they use for a park and rec uses a system for the public? Um, yeah, the thing is our system is comprehensive where it's, it enables us to do complete inspections remotely our files are all tied in with that system. Um, it's it's an it's really a, a great um, mobile remote system for us to utilize when we're out in the field. That's what enables us to do inspections of restaurants and have the restaurant inspection reports and ratings be posted immediately online. That's are you part, doing that's this now? Of, are you yeah, oh yeah, we've been doing that for probably better part of ten years. Okay. So th this is the system we've been using all along. And, uh, <clears throat> and it is the same system or company that um, finance department uses for managing their, the, um, um, for managing finance. So you're, what you're talking about is adding a payment facility within- That's part of it. That's part of it. Yeah, that's a major part of it. Permit renewals and, and currently, we don't have the ability to do that. And we really are looking into seeing if the current, is it City View that, that is the town program? Um, but to see if they can process our payments um, directly. So we are going to be getting another price quote, but we do need to have the ability to um, have this be an online program. It also, you know, it saves the public a lot of work, you know, because, you know, whether you're applying for a septic permit, a lot of folks, 
people don't carry checks with them routinely. I know I don't. And, you know, they, uh, they uh, always have a credit card in their pocket. And I can't tell you how many times people come in and they, they want to pay for something, you know, and use a credit card and we can't take it. So what we're looking for is the ability to have online applications and electronic payment. So that's David, what this, that's what this is about for us. David, it's uh, Jim Cameron. Can I ask a question? Of course. Yeah, um, I mean, Lois is re- making the point that this is a this is a larger issue than just the uh, the health department, and I bet you this new IT steering committee is going to be looking at this because this is really a um, a problem that needs a uh, a town wide solution. However, I, I'm sensitive to your your manpower requests. Um, and, and the question I would ask, I think was asked by John Zagrodsky at the quarterly board of selectmen department heads meeting last week. And that was one of fees. I mean, how much of the fees that you charge actually recoup the cost of providing the service? I think you said Darian's fees are among the highest in, in Fairfield County, but, the, the cost that you apply or that a restaurant pays or a, a nail salon pays, does that actually cover the cost of the inspection and the service that you're providing? No. no so maybe there's, a, maybe there's fee part, recouping that could be done too, right? Well, uh, you know, I, I, how far do you want to push that, Jim? You know, and so it's, it, again, you know, if, if you have a chain that pays, um, $650 to operate a restaurant in Darien and it's uh, $200 in, in Farmington. Um, it's the same company. I mean, you know, I don't know. Different how, market. <laughs> well, Different maybe, market, maybe not. But, you know, I mean, it's no, still I, a certain I, amount I, of work. I, I think you absolutely can justify increasing your head count, but you and I and everybody else who's been at this for a while knows how the pushback is going to be anytime you start talking about full-time equivalencies, you know, adding personnel is just a very difficult process for the, for the board of finance to sign off on. So I'm just, I was more inquiring about, you know, uh, it, we're, we're in effect providing a service, but it's, it's costing us. We're, we're doing it at a loss for the greater good of the public by, by protecting their health. But uh, I just wanted to raise that question because I'm sure others will as well, too. Yeah, I, I don't know how many um, departments across the board actually make money. And, you know, with with programs and with fees um, to me, it's well, not it's, make money, but not, not turn a profit, but at least cover costs. I don't even know how many do that. And, well, you know, I think that question. analysis is 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 something that maybe could be done. But I, I think we come pretty close in, in a lot of our categories. You know, we do a uh, reinspection fee if a, a facility fails two inspections in a year. You know, we, yep. we, uh, we, we charge them for that. And we're actually, I would say, do make money back on things like that. So that was one of the things that we did institute because we felt, you know, why should we be going back multiple times to a place that fails? Right. And, you know, without having there be some consequences for that facility financially. Um, so mm-hmm. so so we do do that. Um, and it's hard to equate a fee that is equitable, like for septic inspections, because you never know how much time you're going to take doing a job. And that could be the same with food service. So, you know, you, you could have some places where I could say some places we're very likely are more than covering the costs of the inspection. Um, some of the smaller places, you know, we don't spend that much time in it at all. And so, you know, so it's, it's really hard to say without really diving into it. But I think we do make money on a percentage of our facilities that we inspect now. Actually make money. Thanks, David. Oh, you're welcome. I thought I lost sound there. No, I'm just muting myself. 
Mac, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the flow here. No, that was a, that was a good question. David, how far are you, are you along in the process of presenting this? I presented this document that you have in front of you to, uh, to Kate on Thursday. So I haven't heard back from her yet on uh, her impressions. But again, everything that's in red, just to go back to the software piece, everything that's in red are things that we currently do paper-wise and, and basically check-wise. Um, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, I have a total of hours. And so, right, grand totals. So that's uh, to the left, that number is pretty much where we are or have been. And to the right is where I see us being when we have the build out of those new projects in town. So there's a significant increase in terms of our time to address what is happening in town with the improved economic environment. David, it's Lois. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the, the thing that occurs to me is there's a lot of startup kind of new businesses with the expansion. And so the timing you're talking about, will that be ongoing or are there, is, there, is there a breakout of startup applications and time reviews versus ongoing? I'm thinking not, but I just want to make sure I ask the question. In other words, if we looked at the, the next year, would it be similar to the, the 5136? Yeah, because what, what it is, is you have plan reviews being replaced by inspections. So, okay. you know, you, and we inspect a lot of those places four times a year. So um, initially, we're going to see a lot of plan reviews before the place is open. And subsequently, we'll be seeing that replaced by the inspections. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, I have another qu question. This is more from, from some of the technology stuff. Is, um, do you, are you trying to do the technology stuff yourself or are you supported by the town IT people? This is an independent company completely. Um, we, we're working again, as I said, through Tyler Tech. They're the ones who administer our, what is called the digital health department. So um, our IT folks basically make sure that the software program that we have integrates with our computer systems with the town hall and maintain the integrity of both. But it is not being done by our IT. It's a separate company. Well, I meant I knew that, but the support for if you have issues with it, you just no, that, you directly deal with Tyler and not with your IT people. Is that exactly unless it's a problem with the town, um, you know, server computer? But yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, a question I would have to you, David, is is what what can we do as the public health and safety committee? to help you move this along if and when you're getting pushback? Well, I, I think that, you know, Jim's question is a good one, but the bottom line is, is that we're, we're constantly being pushed to do more with the same. And, you know, there's only so much more we can do with the same. You know, I happen to be fortunate in that I have a really good and dedicated staff and I, you know, I don't, I, I'm not saying that it should be anything other than that, you know, but <clears throat> when push comes to shove and we start getting more and more facilities, we just aren't going to be able to manage that. And, you know, the person that we have doing our plan reviews now is doing it from home and she's kind of doing it for us as a favor. And the other part-time fellow that we have working for us doesn't know how to do plan reviews. So we really have to change what we're doing now going forward to meet the demands of, you know, what we're being faced with. So, uh, you know, if, to answer your question, uh, Mac, um, to advocate for the proposal to be able to have an extra full-time person, 
I'm not even sure how we're going to integrate that person into our office, but we'll make sure that we do because, you know, our office isn't that big. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, we have a, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to move around our public health nurse. And I, that's another thing I wanted to increase her hours because uh, giving her more uh, or that position, more responsibilities, things are getting more complicated in the world, you know, with substance abuse, we've got marijuana legalization. We want to do some programs on that. Um, you know, there's, there's, um, EMS continues to report their number one reason for calls is for falls. And we want to get, do some uh, outreach on that. I know other programs are there, but we could help. Um, so, you know, um, there are several things that we would like to do. And, uh, you know, the full, I think the full-time position is important. I think the software is important to enable us to have, to be able to spend more time doing other things. And I think the extra hours for the nurse, and that's still going to re- remain a part-time position. I'm not asking for a full-time position there. Just a Mac, few more hours. Mac, it's Jim. Can I chime in on something? Sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, just for everybody's benefit, especially the new folks, I mean, the way the budget gets built is, David said, he presented his budget to Kate, the town administrator. She tonight at the Board of Selectmen meeting, which is happening even as we speak, is presenting her budget to the Board of Selectmen. Now, the Board of Selectmen is going to go through that budget department by department. And I believe if you look on the town web calendar, it is either Tuesday evening or Wednesday, starting at 5.30 in the afternoon, the Board of Selectmen is going to go through the budget department by department. And the health department is specifically listed there in alphabetical order. So if anybody really wanted to advocate for David's requests, and if if any department can make a request for more this year, it's got to be the health department. Uh, but if anybody wants to advocate for that, I think that the time would be to watch those meetings and uh, see if there's a chance for public comment or sending questions in advance. Because I think we have to monitor what's going to happen to the budget now. The sausage making has begun. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, I'd Jim. like to ask another question. What if they don't, the, the implication of a full-time person has, um, which scares everybody because it has the long-term commitment as well as the, all the additional benefits. What would, is it possible in, to get another half-time person or something like that? I mean, there, there are financial implications of a full-time staff person versus doing it with several um, part-time people. Have you looked at that, David? Well, we do have that. We've been operating that way. Um, but there's inefficiencies associated with that because different people coming in in different days, they're not able to follow up on the things they started. And we're not able to follow up with things that they started. And um, it, it's, 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 it's just an inefficient way to do things. Um, and uh, as I said, that has been the way we've been operating um, for, for, well, all along. And I think that with the additional, again, with the additional um, development that's occurring in town with the additional demands upon time, um, I just don't see us being able to manage it the same way. Okay. David, what's the talent pool out there right now? Well, that's a I good would question imagine too. The, peop- the people who are really good are in high demand and they wouldn't want to be working at a part-time job unless they had family reasons, perhaps. Well, but you mentioned that you mentioned like the, the, the planning work that's now being done by home from home. I, is that the young lady who's your restaurant inspector and she's working from home for COVID reasons? No. No, he, that's someone um, else. This, this was a part time inspector that we had who basically retired for the third time. And I convinced her to stay on to do the plan reviews, just to stay on Probably. and just do that. No, so no, our 
our person who's been doing the inspections, Mindy Shambrelli, is is yeah. indispensable, and she's here every day. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Lori Lori Romick is the one who is the person who is actually uh, doing our plan reviews, and she worked here prior to even me being in in Darien uh, for a number for several years. She's she's I'll consider her to be an expert, but. The talent pool for part time is really we're we're really talking about for the most part, Jim, retirees, and mm -hmm. you know people who've retired. Well, they could be anywhere, right? They are, they and they have to necessarily been. be in town. But I mean, there may be retirees uh, that you could recruit, given the, the the nature of work moving more than people now. That's you also might part find of somebody the, else out there, right? That's also part of the problem because we can't. They don't really want to do it. You know, they don't want to have a regular schedule for the most part. And, right. you know, so it, so it's a it's it's tricky. And, I, you know, we've been lucky to have the people we have currently and all along. Um, but, you know, I don't know. That's I don't know how sustainable that is. And, you know, going forward, I just don't see us being able to continue managing it the same way we've been all along. And. You know, um, it's it, yes, it's another person. Yes, it's benefits, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and and all of the other uh, other things associated with it. It it costs more because we're going to have to have, you know, costs associated with cell phones. You know, there are there are costs associated with it. But again, you know, I just do not see us being a viable department. Um, with the same structure we currently have. You know, David, I'm thinking that if you have not presented to the selectmen yet, that this is a good preview of answering questions and thinking about how you want to respond when I'm sure these questions will all be brought up. By oh, the sure. Mm -hmm. I, while I was grilled along the same lines by, uh, by Kate, yep. and uh, you know, her question to me is also, are there programs that we're currently doing that aren't mandated that we could cut back on so that we could reallocate time and people? And my answer to that is I, I have a list of the things that we basically do here and I don't see any places that we can really cut out. And I didn't even put everything in there that we do. Um, but um, um, so yes, you're right, Lois, this is a preview. Thank you. alert the media. <laughs> well, thank you, David. I'm going to get get ready for the RTM meeting. Um, I, I appreciate your candor. And, and if you just you know, let us as a committee or individually know what we can do to be of any help, uh, I'll, I'll be there for you. All right. Well, I, I appreciate any help that uh, you folks can give because um, I, I do think it's important for us to move forward and prepare for what the town is trying to do with its developments. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, we, we need to be there and we need to be there efficiently and effectively. Oh, so David, I'm, I'm just looking at the COVID line. Oh, those are flu clinic. Those are clinics. Well, we have um, both. Wh whether you would see that whether that would go, it looks like the, the clinics will go, you have going down. So I do. Um, I, I am very, very optimistic for the future <laughs> with respect to that. So I could be wrong, in which case <laughs> that it's happened before yeah. that I've been wrong. But yeah, I'm anticipating that next this year is going to be better than last. I don't know why, but I just feel it. So that means, and since the numbers are higher, that you're reallocating some of the, the time that went to COVID in the past year to some other know. activities. I don't even know how we did that. Yeah, honestly. I don't either. But Volunteers. <laughs> in, in large part, thanks, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> but we were there, you know, so, you know, my staff and I were there for all of these clinics. So. You know, it was it was time. And it, of course, it was also time on our time, you know, so we did the weekend clinics and, uh, you know, and we were there. And so uh, 
but uh, yeah, I am still at, I am anticipating a less of a less of a demand for the upcoming year. Uh, David, I mean those those Saturdays you you were working with your with your team. I mean it's it, it's a full day, and then some. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and we were doing Fridays and Friday is not a work day for, for us. And, you know, the, the questions and, you know, the, the calls and the panicky queries from business folks and, you know, coaches of teams and meetings with the superintendent of schools, you know, that was, they, they happened all the time. You know, there mm -hmm. were weekends and, evenings and so it's it's been it's been an interesting challenging two years and i'm I, again i'm saying i'm optimistic going forward that uh you know maybe this year won't be i don't know right be so bad or so tough well and everybody should know if they don't already that david does that on top of a commute from long island yeah <laughs> so um you're my eyes and ears out there on the waves and rails david but uh i mean i don't know how you did it for the past year so well, kudos to you and your staff i, I want to tell you that best part of my day is the uh crossing on the ferry <laughs> 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 i have had so many beautiful sunrises and sunsets over the past two years it's been incredible <laughs> so i have lots of pictures to share <laughs> but thank you jim sure well, David, thank you. I, I know you're going to speak to the full RTM, you know, on on, on all all things COVID. Um, <laughs> I know. Did, did you see the email from Laura? Laura Pesci. She had a question for you that that I thought you could answer uh, um, during during that time. Well, you know, I saw that she sent me an email, and I didn't open it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a look at it if I we will. can. Okay, I will. Matt, can I ask a question just on the reporting? Sure. Um, so, David, when, am I, when I look at that, the charts, I have trouble um, not seeing enough history because I can see that we're spiking in the December, January timeframe, but I don't see, and then I'm not going to be particular about one because I don't want to go through them, but I don't know what last December, January looked like. So I don't know if we're similar to last or way, way over last, last year. So if there would be some way on some of those charts of incorporating more of a history, so there we is. see some parallels. There is. Okay. There is. The, the monthly charts go back to the beginning of time. Okay. You're talking about the weekly report? I'm, I'm not sure which one. I'll have to take a look. But, I'll, you know, it wasn't clear to me that, the that weekly I can see the time sense. Oh, the weekly report goes back to the beginning of COVID time, okay. which is March of whatever year it was, 1920. Yeah. Yeah, um, 19. But, yeah, so no, December... 20. December of last year, December 20, not, not 21, but 20 was also a peak. December mm -hmm. and January. So we had we had the same peak, same time. This year's is much higher. Okay. Uh, but it's it should be there. I mean, I it is there. Um, so Okay, um, I'll try and be more specific if I can figure out what I was looking at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But it's there. Okay. Well, David, thank you. I, I'll I think we should wrap up with you so you have a little time between the meetings. Um, any other any other questions with David re regarding the budget? Okay, well, th thank you and uh, we'll, we'll see you in about a half an hour. All right, thanks everybody. Good night. Yeah, thanks, David. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, David. Bye. Well, that, that was our only real discussion for tonight. Um, one thing we could talk about a little bit, we have a couple of minutes, is is the, um, the the money that the town is getting. Um, I, I think Lois, it's what six six million. It's more, yeah. We, we we may want to talk about some things that we could recommend uh, as public health and safety that the the town look into. Um, um, you know, using that money for uh, that are under the umbrella of public health and safety. You know, sidewalks come to, come to mind, for example. Um, you know, now might be a time to, to think about that. And a lot of that legwork has already been, been done in the past with a pedestrian study. So that might be some, something we, we could suggest. Any, any other ideas?
So if, um, I, th I think that committee is going to be looking for things. So maybe I could put something together and just show it to everybody and we could maybe agree on it at the, at the next meeting. So any, any other announcements or anything? Mac, yeah, is, ahead, there, is there any way to put on, and I don't know if this might be a state issue more than anything, but like more more um, crosswalks? Sure, that, that, that could be incorporated with, with the sidewalks. But I, I, I know there was a master list that was made. It seems like yesterday it was could have been five five years ago of, of pedestrians. And then they went through, through the whole town on 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 you know corners and whatnot so maybe maybe i was you know, i was on that i was on that committee yeah the pedestrian infrastructure advisory committee yeah. right so i i have to believe that, that there are some things in there that, that were never done that, that could be revisited. Well, there was a lot of there's a lot of things we came up with a lot of things all over mm -hmm. town but it, there has been some improvements there's been a couple of mm -hmm. sidewalks that have been put in but around the railroad tracks was a big issue for us that there need mm -hmm. to be more sidewalks and and crossings about the railroad. Well, I, I remember seeing pic pictures of, of sidewalks that would just end. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be yeah. walking in and just quite walk, a few walk, of them. You, walk you into a wall or a tree or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the crosswalk issue is there. If it's a, a town, a state road, then the state has to be responsible for the crosswalk. If well, it's a town that's road, the, that's what they, that's what we were told. But if you look in New Canaan, if you look in New Canaan, there's a lot of state roads like 124, plenty of of, <laughs> of sidewalks and, and crossings there, and they did not have a problem. The problem is that the town has to pay for it, not the state. Ah. So the state will sign off on it, but but the town has to pay for it, and that's where the problem comes in. It was a very high price for it too, wasn't it? It was like a. It was like twenty thousand dollars because it has to be, uh, uh, it has to be uh, uh, for the handicapped people. It has to be very specifically how it's done. But it's a need, okay. definitely a need yeah. I think, to, to, for people to be safe and to, to be able to get out and walk and exercise and bike. I think it's really important. Um, the crosswalk with a handicapped by um, next to um, the, uh, which, what, what is that um, place? The, the sandwich shop right there. Um, Papa, no, no, what, what's it called down there, town with they have the umbrellas outside on the post road? Um, oh, um, Uncle, Uncle Yeah, Joe's. right, 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 exactly, Uncle of whatever, yeah. So oh. I was, wa yeah, I was walking um, there Uncle's one Dallas. day. Yeah, I was walking there one day and it all floods and I couldn't go uh, down the ramp. It's all totally flooded there and that really needs kind of repair. Mm -hmm. um, but I walk all over town. The other thing, I don't know if we can do anything, but when you walk under the bridge, I know it's a state road and the bridge um, down by going to Whole Foods there in the post road, um, all the birds nest up there. And you talk about health and safety, having all this, uh, you know, there's stuff coming down. And then, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, bird flu or whatever, right? And I know other towns have been able to get some grading there so the birds can't go up there, the pigeons. So I wonder if there's anything we could ever do about that. But more and more, we want this to be a walkable community. Absolutely. And yeah. yeah. So I don't know how to do that since there's, you know, it's a state. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know other places did have that grading under the bridge. Mm -hmm. And so the birds can't go up in there. And that really took care of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it really comes down to who's going to pay for it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So is there some negotiation or like, yeah. you know, like, can that some of that six million dollars, you know, a portion of that be put in that with the state, you know, funding also? Is there something we could do around that? I think the answer to that is yes. It's just that I I think there's a committee that that is going to be controlling these 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 monies, and they're looking for ideas, and and yeah. it's probably the the squeakiest wheel is going to is going to get some of that money. So I I, I think what I'll Try to work, work up something and get it out to everybody before our next meeting, and then it gives us some talking points, and we can actually do a statement, and then and then give it to them. Yeah, and even some of these crosswalks actually might need a stop sign because though they're on the Roten Avenue, 
crossing over to Park Road there um, by Town Hall. I cross there regularly and more often than not, the cars don't stop. And with yeah. that new law, you know, that you're supposed to, if somebody's trying to get across, you're supposed to stop. You, you can't count on it at all. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's all good. Well, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and break here? Um, um, we've got our meeting coming up in about 10 minutes. So. Um, I, Jack, yep. Sorry to interrupt. Sure, go ahead. I was just wondering, I mean, can we vote or um, do something about a statement uh, from all of us sort of supporting uh, David and, you know, in what he was requesting or what, what's our, you know, what can we do to, to support his efforts? Or, well, you know, that, that's what we were kind of asking. I think, I think maybe the thing you do is watch, watch the, the budget meeting like he suggested. Um, I, I mean, we, we don't really have anything formally to vote on at this point about it, but I, I think, you know, even, even if you just would shoot an email to, to Kate, for example, um, that, that, you know, you're, you're concerned about the budget and you, you support a, a full-time person for that. Cause that, that's, that's, I've done that once already myself um, to, to support David as a member of the advisory board of health. But I think that would be the, be the best, the best way to go. I think the history in public health, um, being in public health myself, is that it has been historically underfunded because it, it operates behind the scenes a lot. People really don't see it. And um, and then there's some catastrophe and it's like, well, where is public health? So the big buzzword, of course, I use now, not just in public health, is about the infrastructure and how David was talking about building up this infrastructure you know, with the, the billing and the uh, streamlining of, you know, the kinds of stuff, the full-time staff, a lot of things that you're not really going to see too much out there. And I think if we, you know, I'm going to look at the meetings and, and you know, advocate for, you know, his uh, full-time person and also, you know, streamlining some of this uh, billing situation online. So let them figure out how to do that, if they can integrate that with IT with the other departments, I don't know, but you know, something really does need to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, do you have a motion to adjourn? Okay, is it second? All in favor? Okay, all right, well, th thanks. And uh, um, we'll, we'll, we'll meet, meet again next month. And, and like I said, we can, we can address the, uh, the sidewalk issue a little bit more.